Today on the Skid Factory, we're doing three sets of 15 and making ourselves a rear bar. Welcome back to the Skid Factory. Today we are going to make a rear bar for the patrol. Uh, we've got a Dobinson's front bar and I've fitted some side skirt, uh, side steps from them as well. It's all bolt on stuff, pretty, pretty basic. But for the rear, we've um, decided we're just gonna like, fabricate a bar out of tube. A couple of reasons for that. One of them is the tires that I'm using now that won't fit on the, on the tailgate mount. And even if you modified it so it did fit the tailgate uh, door would probably fall off because it's too heavy so the way around this is to make a bar rear bar and then put a, a swing away for the spare tire so to do that I've enlisted Matthew good friend and uh, helper on the show Matt is a fabricator fabricator Matt's our hook up for on the spot flanges he's yeah, yeah. he is too yeah, that's right so fabricator would have called them boiler makers or that's old school term. Old school term for it. Um, you also have sheet metal. Sheet metal. Sheety. And hydraulics. Just a wizard. And hydraulics wizard, CAD drawer, stuff like that. And also owner of a twin turbo LS R32 Skyline, just to yeah. upset all you purists. Yeah. And hide under a tarp. Yeah. <laughs> hey, when's that? When's that coming back? Are we going to re refilm that? It's going to get a. Stuff. I've got parts. I've done a heap of work on it. I've got parts. It's got, going through some, got some visual valve, valve springs and a cam and yeah, a, as well as GDR tail lights and stuff like that. So. Sweet. A few changes. GDR tail lights. Mm. Baller. Yeah, just bolt on, eh? <laughs> After you cut the back <laughs> of the car off. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. So what's the process we're following here, Matthew? All right. So what I've originally done is I've done some sketches, just some basic ideas of what you wanted, um, and obviously got some tube to suit the bender. So what I've done is I've, I've done the drawings up in CAD. So now I've transferred those drawings from the sophisticated CAD to a chalk drawing on the floor. Yeah, sweet. So you, sometimes you've got to go old school. So what we've done, we've done a test bend, just to test the machine out, but also to set our parameters to order, also find where our Bend mark starts, and from that we're able to calculate where the centre of our tube will be, to where our bend starts, to where our overall size will end up, and that's what the chalk drawing is for. So we can mark out our centre line. This is CL. This BS on the floor here. That's for our bend starts. I know what BS starts. means. There. Bend start. No, 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 okay. it's yeah. not, not what I thought. No, nah. different BS. Yeah, so that will be our first bend. So what we have, we need to be a required 1800 inside to clear the, the under quarter underneath the tail light. So that's what this point here is. Um, so by marking it on the floor where our bends start, we can then bend out and we can be pretty sure that we'll meet that requirement around the panels and clearance. So the machine, or well the bender that we're using is a Bailey. It's from Heron Forbes Machinery House. Uh, it, this isn't cheap. Uh, it's about $2,000 for the bender, plus I think it's about 500 bucks for each die set that you might use. Uh, but it is a pretty precision bit of gear. It's not, it's not one of those jacks with a, that you just jack up the pipe and it kinks in half. This is, this is a really good quality unit. Uh, so yeah, it's expensive, but if you're into four-wheel drives and you've got five mates that are into four-wheel drives and you want to make your own stuff, just go fifths in it, leave it in some one of your mate's sheds and you can, you can easily pay for itself by making your own custom sliders and rear bars and front bars and that sort of stuff. So it's, it's a doable thing. We're using tube or tube if you're in America. Not pipe. It's not pipe. So pipe and tube aren't the same thing. It's different. So we're starting with the, obviously the, everything cleaned off on the rear there. Um, we have cut off a, so it was like an ext a tow hook extension. You can see the four bolts for the tow hook. 
here, but for some reason, I don't know why, maybe it's, who knows, that had, had a big extension for it. So we've removed that because we don't need that and it's going to get in the way of our bar work. Uh, we've got a couple of plates here that are just being cut and drilled to mount uh, onto the original uh, bar mounts. It's got pretty heavy duty uh, bolts, 14 mil to hold these on, so it can, can take a fair bit of weight. Um, and I don't know what it's going to look like because I haven't looked at Matt's drawings and even if I did, I wouldn't know what it, what it was. So Matt can explain the design. How about it? So basically, it's just a straight up tube system that's probably with this bit of gear that's going to make the job a whole lot easier. So it's just basically, we've got a top tube here that runs around, wraps around the panel here. We have another one very similar, a little bit narrower, and it will come around the bottom and then come down on an angle. And then we've got a two upper ones which will start up here, wrap around underneath the light, and then there'll be an upright post there to end them, so we've got door clearance so we can swing out. Difference with this side here, we'll have a bush axle set up for the swing arm for the wheel. The swing arm will be tube as well, all the same tube, but what we're going to do is we're going to utilise the original carrier, and that will be welded or mounted into the original frame, or the new frame, and that will be our swing out arm. Now, if you can still use that, that's half the work you know, taken out of the job, so utilise what you've got. Alan, I'm just going to address the elephant in the room. Why didn't you quarter chop it, bro? <laughs> the elephant in the room? Yeah, that's you. <laughs> Why didn't you quarter chop your patrol, bros? I don't know what a quarter chop is. What is it? <laughs> It's when you cut the quarters though to give you more clearance so you don't bash them in when you're doing camp road, bro. Ooh. Drive better. <laughs> We're cutting up the quarters, we that's just stupid. You're stupid. height, if you come down, sort of leave our height level with that, yeah. so that we have our door clearance. Sweet. Bending tube is as simple as it looks. The only addition would be some quick maths to calculate the distances required between each bend. A digital anglometer is handy to ensure that both bends are level when it comes to bending the same piece twice. We've got our two main bars bent up and tacked into place onto the um, chassis mount plates. They've got notches in them so it all sort of sits pretty flush and has uh, good support and a, a sort of a good weld run when we do weld it. Um, Matt's been fiddling around with this, uh, that's the swing away for the spare wheel um, housing thing weld on. It's actually basically just a wheel bearing. So that's sort of at the end of a trailer stub. These are just wheel bearings from a Holden or something like that. And um, 
then they just machine up this weld on block. Um, you could do this yourself with great time and effort, but these cost about 50 or 60 bucks on eBay, so it's, um, it's a bit of a no-brainer to just to use these. On that topic of uh, getting stuff, where's the, where's the tube from? Where do you... uh, the tube is called um, inch and a half precision tube, so it's not roll cage tubing because it's got a seam in it. Um, but it's uh, like the outside finish is, is quite high quality, so um, it's yeah better than normal tube. Yeah, it's good, uh, good, good to bend, easy to bend. Yeah, so that just comes from a local supplier. It's just called Precision Tube. and um, I can't eBay link that one? <laughs> you probably will. I would hate to see the freight cost of getting six metres of Precision Tube from uh, eBay. <laughs> but go for your life. Uh, the other thing we've been doing is um, making these little support uh, weld on bits. Just little standoffs or something. Like uh, notched. So I've been using the mill drill to notch them, which works really well. It's got like a tilt head and stuff like that, so we'll probably make use of that later. But I've got a really good uh, vice, so. Everything's sort of held down really well. It's pretty easy. Um, we did have a tube notcher that Matt actually made for us. It's kind of like more of a portable thing, but at some stage he repossessed it to make changes to it, and we never saw it again. So it's coming. It's all good. You don't need a tube notcher though. Do you, you don't need a tube notcher. You can just do this by hand. It is pretty time-consuming though, and obviously nowhere near as um, sort of accurate as that. Um, but yeah, you can you can always fill it up with a well day. Eh? Get we'll the put the mix for you. The stick welder out. 15 oh, kilo roll goes a long way. <laughs> the stick welder. Yeah. Oh yeah. Might it be a demon on the stick, I reckon. <laughs> I'm all about the stick. <laughs> Although Matt has drawn the design up in CAD, it still pays to go old school and draw the template out on the workshop floor using some chalk. Matt tells us this is still one of the best templates to use when it comes to DIY metalwork. That's a whole lot of BS. It's a lot. It's a lot to handle. Alan, do you know what BS stands for? Yep. What's that? Backspace. Bendy spanners. Bruised scrotum. Pinky style. It's not a cup of tea. The last lemon squash and it's frozen. Is that the last one? Why? <laughs> it's 
it's a slushy. Matthew's back at work now. It was uh, during the weekend that we were fiddling around with this initially. Uh, he's back at his proper job. So he's sort of given us some instructions to be left with to move on with it. And I'm sort of slowly fiddling around. Um, we added some tread plate here. So that's not really to stand on, but it's to sort of cover up all the bits of chassis and stuff that are hanging out underneath the car. It kind of looks a bit weird when you open the doors. So I just profiled that along to, to fit. Um, its secondary purpose is to hold, to bolt this piece of um, nylon pad to. So and the purpose of that is that takes the weight of the wheel when, when it's on there. So you, can, you could just leave it hanging, but it would just bend. Eventually it's very heavy, so um, you can either sit it metal to metal, but then it obviously fatigues through, or um, Matt suggested we use this piece of nylon. Uh, we've bent a little profile in it by heating it and putting it in the um, pan brake. Just so it's a bit of a lead in, so it feeds in. Um, this is an over center latch that holds it all together. So it's all just tacked on there and that's your stopper plate that mounts the latch and also is your, your end point for where it sits. Uh, we've added an extra bar here and the mounting of the wheel is the old, what used to bolt onto the door here, just cut off the legs of it and sort of clean up all the paint and profiled it on so it, so it will go on there like that. Done spent heaps of time leveling and all this the rest of the crap. To lift the wheel up there, the thing it weighs a lot. You can't hold it up there, so we made a, a jerry rig to um, hold it out of a trolley and a motorbike ramp and a bit of wood. And we actually had about ten different things we were using until we got the right height. But you got to do what you can. So um, it should all work. For the moment everything is just being tacked together and uh, that's a good thing because we've had to untack things and move them around and you sort of, you can't always think of everything unless you've been doing this for years and even then you still mess it up. So um, it's good to be able to just remove something and start again or just move it a little bit so just, just good strong tacks everywhere um, just to, until everything's done and then you know, when, when you, everything works, it's all opening and shutting and everything's not crunching into other things, then you can weld it all up. So the tread plate finishes here. Um, there'll be uprights here and another wraparound bar. All these midsections here, are gonna, that'll be tail lights there. The rest of the midsections will be 1.6 zinc sheet with sort of um, dimple dye holes in them just to fill in the gaps. Uh, if you're not from Australia, you're probably going, why the hell are you putting tail lights on it when it's already got them here? Well, these tail lights don't do anything because in Australia we have like ridiculously overdone design laws and because this bare wheel is on the side, you can't see this light from a 45 degree angle. You, they can't use these lights, so all the patrols and land cruisers and everything in Australia that had a rear wheel, they would have just some dodgy trail lights in the, in the rear bar and Sometimes these still work, but in this, in this case, they're just blank. They don't do anything. So um, a lot of people do make these work, but as long as it's got tail lights, I don't care. Nope, that one will be half covered by a wheel. So we're just going to keep tacking away, checking things, and we'll be finished in a couple of days. With the swing away tacked together using the MIG, Alan double checks the operation of the barn doors and runs his eyes over to double check for any clearance issues. Al gives it the OK sign of approval so we can continue fabricating.
Matt's original design had a sharp edge on the lower part of the bar, which we all agreed could be replaced with a bend instead. I bent up a new lower piece that followed the contour of the middle bar and meets up with the Nissan flare. To fill in the gaps between the bar work, we're using some 1.6mm zinc sheet that's cut to size and then finished off with some dimple dies. Not only does this add strength, but also covers up the ugly bits of the body and chassis behind the bar. That's a big one. That's our bar work done. Well, most of it anyway. We've still got a little bit of fiddling around to do. Um, it sort of has evolved a bit since off the original design. We've added a few bits and pieces. Um, I've added more tread plate just to fill in the gaps. It just, just looks a bit nicer to covering up the sort of open areas along here. This tread plate also stiffened this up a lot. Um, Got tail lights, obviously. They're just um, LED tail lights with a reverse in them. Just got them from Super Cheap Auto. Um, we added some supports to the um, swing away post. This thing's really heavy and it just sort of has a lot of potential for movement. And when you're driving along rough roads, that thing's flapping back and forward. It's going to fatigue everything and, and eventually snap off and fall off behind the car. So we did have to sort of modify things a little bit along the way. Um, the thing about bar work is it's really, really time consuming, but if you've got time and you've got not much funds, then it's still worthwhile, especially if you share with your mates on the cost of the bender, the tube is cheap, it's just all time, but if you're into that, well, you're obviously into modifying cars because you're here watching me, so um, it's definitely doable. Styling wise, you can make this bar look like however you want. Um, this is how Matt sort of envisaged it. We did change things. He did have square edges here. And Woody and I just went on, oh, let's do some more bending because we had a bender. So we curved the edges kind of to stop it from snagging if you were to hit. We also added some supports down underneath onto the rail and sort of uh, welded some uh, like brackets onto the, the chassis rail with Matt's permission. So a um, few changes and it kind of does evolve as you're doing it. Now I get why these things cost about $3,000 to buy um, from a fabrication mob or from whatever ARB or whatever, whoever sells them. There's a lot of time in it. Um, not so much material cost, but just the, the, the time spent fabricating it. Um, this one's ready to come off and get powder coated. Um, we're just going to go with a matching satin to the Dobinson's front bar and the side um, steps. Uh, Matt has kindly donated the designs 
from this. Um, he's, we've posted them up on our Patreon uh, page, so if you, if you like this and you'd like to copy it, you can download them from there. Um, even even a good place to start to get an idea and make. Yeah, as I said, the styling of it is up to you, but sort of gives you an idea of how how the design works as far as um, structure goes. So you can do it any way you like. You can do it much simpler than this. It doesn't have to be extravagant and filled with this stuff. It just depends on how you want it to look. You going to help me make my rear bar and my side steps? Does it need it? Yeah. No. It's because yeah. your door's going to fall off because it's got a <laughs> bigger tire on it now. Maybe, yeah. That's pretty much why we're here, so. <laughs> we should have this back in a few days from powder coating, then we're going to bolt it all back on finally. We've got a bunch of other accessories to go on it that every four-wheel drive needs to be a proper rig. We've got a roof cage and awnings and drawers and fridges and all sorts of stuff uh, that we got from Super Cheap Auto. So that's all got to go in, and then we might be ready for... I don't know, a maiden voyage maybe. Probably have to get a trade plate for that, but that's all good. <laughs> we'll um, dug a dugger our way down the street and see what it's like. So tune in next week to see that. Thanks for watching. Doing that quarter chop now, You're are you? Filming me doing dodgy shit. Yeah. Tube. 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 <laughs> Tube. 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 Tune. Tune. Who's gonna tune this? Tune. C H double O N. The intricacies of the English language. Good in PS. Still needs a job. Need a job? What's your qualifications? We'll advertise for you. Could, couldn't afford it. Anything, anything but playing in the dirt. Alright. What's your number? <laughs> Contact Alan. <laughs> via the Skid Factory. Email info at theskidfactory.com. <laughs> week on, week off required. Goody needs a job. Last step, we shouted out to who we couldn't remember wanted the snorkel. And of course, Matt got onto us. Uh, Matt's actually from Croy Coffee Roasters up the road from us. He uh, roasts coffee, as the name suggests. Uh, so he came down, dropped us off a care package, heaps of coffee and some other good bits, and took away the snorkel to fit to his GU. So it was a good deal, especially for me. The kind of transaction that you like, isn't it? Yeah, it smells good. <sighs> The place smelt like coffee instead of schmutz and chuches for a while. So maybe we should just leave this in here. It's like when you buy something off Marketplace and then you ask the guy to meet you halfway, but halfway is actually just up the road from your house. That's why you're like Facebook Marketplace, <laughs> marketplace <laughs> champion. On it. It's a Sevy tactic. Yeah. Yo, right. yo, dog, yo, meet me at your yeah. Monday. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Gold Coast. Oh, yeah, I'm from Rockhampton. I'll meet you at... Uh, Noosa. <laughs> Alan, you forgot to shout out the guy that gave us that bottle opener that you put in the I wrong don't spot. I remember who gave it to us. It was a guy in um, a drag week, wasn't it? No? Yeah. Wasn't it the guy that gave us the can of Old Bay? I don't know. Maybe it was sent to us. And also, you didn't shout out Reese, who's here to clean this wonderful thing. To clean it. <laughs> important jobs. It is an important job. You're not going to do it. You know this is going to be the only time that it'll ever get washed. Ever, yeah. And then, I know that. I've seen and then, him with his Actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Heidi's washed the pool. Ooh, that's good again. Hey Alan, just when I was doing a few cutaways I noticed that Still a few tacks on the bottom that aren't finished. Yeah. Why's that? I can't weld them from inside the main.
in so it's facing. Oh yeah, of course. Sorry. Derp. Derp. Any departing? Any departing words? Hook it. Hook it. Oh, Bruce! <laughs> Just as I was about to bail out. Should I give him a thongy? <laughs>